<laughs> so a couple of funny things happen. Funny things always happen at Tinley. Um, if you can see my shirt here, it's pretty nice. It has uh, some turtles and snake and lizard and stuff. And it's from Michigan Society of Herpetologists. Um, go check them out on their Facebook. And I'll show you a little clip of why I think that we owe them. Uh, we, we were being feeling very generous and we did a donation for them and did a little thing and then it got a little carried away. Yeah. It's a bit, I had to pay it them. It was funny. <laughs> it was funny, but... It was really not funny for me. Like, it funny at first and then not. So, check this out. Could have won either way. <laughs> this is Ben. I'm from r &B Reptiles. Ryan's uh, back there videoing as well because he doesn't want to do this. But we're here with Michigan Society of Herpetologists. And uh, these guys have a really cool setup. Lots of fun stuff for uh, your kids and maybe older kids that, you know, don't know what they're doing and just want to play with stuff. So, <laughs> so you got to go check them out on Facebook. Donate stuff. I'll donate money now. I don't know. But they have a bob game. And they told me that, I don't know why, it seems like not a good idea, but you're supposed to use your mouth to bob for these. But <laughs> So we're going to give this a whirl. Um, I'm pretty tall, so I'm going to have to get down on my knees. Please don't make any funny jokes, you know. But, um, <laughs> so it's a dollar a try. So we'll, we'll pay you guys. All right, here we go. Uh, green's my favorite, so uh, let's try this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. All right, he's got, got it. it. It's not green. <laughs> Dang it. You right. lose. This tastes like it tastes like salmonella. I don't know why. <laughs> it tastes That's like awesome. Green. What the heck? I gotta get a green one. I can't. I gotta go back. Over. <laughs> oh! oh. oh. That? <laughs> awesome. And that's when we get kicked out of Tindley. Pick up the shirt. So now there. we're. Uh, I'm so glad this is all video. <laughs> Well, I guess we're gonna go get some towels and pay for some uh, more bids or get some more water. <laughs> Thank you guys, it's great. It's awesome. I think it's the last day. All right. So I'm here with Brandon Shiflet from Rare Earth, and uh, he's doing a lot of really cool animals. And we're gonna just ask him a couple questions. So, tell us a little about what you're doing and what you're passionate about. And I'm gonna come behind the camera. Working with Australian dwarf monitors and uh, pygmy spiny-tailed skinks, or the Agernia genus. And so that's really what I'm passionate about. I got quite a few different species, and definitely have my hands full with the species I'm looking with. So I jokingly say I'm old and boring because I've got plenty of uh, uh, different species that I'm working with and, and love all of them. Oh, that's awesome. And you got some babies here, that some for sale and some not, and uh, yeah, we we're just checking them out. Of course, everybody loves the uh, Kimberleys. They're just super fun. They're not terribly large, and uh, they get a little long, but not too bad. It's super intelligent animals. Um, all right, so real quick question for you. You know, if you uh, could get a beard transplant, would you do it? Like, because, I mean, I see you got a little gum, but. <laughs> hey, this is the beginning of the growing season for me. I've got to be, uh, you know, clean shaven over the summer. So, uh, yes, give, give, me, give me four or five months and then I'll, right. I'll match you there. We'll, be, we'll ask you for a picture. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, I man. can show you my driver's license. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Like where you guys are from, like, because uh, everybody has their own uh, their own business name. Texas Bell Exotics. From Texas. Reggie's Urban Jungle. BP Collector. Applied Pressure Reptiles. Gershon yeah. from GP Snakes. Yeah. Darius Britt, DB Exotic Moore. There we go. And you guys just came here for the first time, right, Tinley? Oh, yeah. Yes. Checking it out, meeting up. Eighth time. Really awesome. Eighth time. Yeah, there we go. Oh, well, you're from up this way. I'm, I'm up from here. Oh, you are too. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. It's what it's about, man. Yeah, Make a awesome. connection. Together, yeah, community. That's right. All of it. No way. No way. You know all. 
I do not. But, yes, I, I just, love your help I just room. know Phil, and he knows all, and that's all I need to know. All right, we have Kevin McCurley here from Nerd. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them. I mean, <laughs> anyway, so back to Tinley, doing a show again. Five years. Um, five years gone. Unbelievable. Uh, and you haven't done any shows really since then, right? No. No, unbelievable. I think the last show that we saw you at was uh, White Plains, I think. Like forever ago, it feels like. Yeah. And <laughs> the flea market. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you brought a cow, you brought a bowling spider. We want to definitely check those out. He has a ton of really awesome stuff. So, what is bringing you back? Like, what's the passion? What's driving you nowadays? There's a whole bunch of. Th uh, let's see. So I got a little burnt out five years ago. Yeah. You know, you're breeding snakes you, you. like crazy, producing stuff. And I got a little, uh, a little discouraged, so I took about two years off of breeding ball pythons. Bred very little ball pythons. Uh, breeding retics, breeding some other different things, but kind of uh, just not breeding ball pythons for two years, and then suddenly breeding ball pythons again with my other stuff. And I'm like, ah, you, and people are going, you should go to the show. So decided we'll go to the show. This is probably the best show, or one of the best shows that I can think of right oh, you know, every sure. year. So I figured this is the show to go do it. So we dusted off some of the displays. I got some new displays. And yeah, then man. just started showing out the stuff that we produce. Oh, it's awesome. And, yeah. uh, you definitely have some really great stuff, and you know it's great seeing you guys out again. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we, we don't vanish again. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we kind of went through a similar thing. Uh, maybe three years ago, we were like kind of slowed down. We sold a, a bunch of breeders, and we kick ourselves now, you know, and yeah. like kind of getting back up, and you it, know, just things are going it, well now. It's you know? it's tough when you're a breeder and you're doing this kind of stuff. There's a lot of overhead. There's not a lot of money. You might have money going through your hands, but you actually don't get to retain the money yeah. because it's very expensive. So the, the better I want to keep my animals, the more money it costs me to do it. Sure, absolutely. And so I always, like, my entire focus of my life is to keep and enjoy my animals. That's, like, yeah. literally it. So any kind of money, I don't really invest it in myself. I invest it in my animals or my collection. Yep. So you go through a lot of emotions, and you go through a lot of, like, um, get discouraged and then you get upbeat and then the market's yeah. doing this so you always have to kind of reinvent things but I also try to re, re uh, focus into other projects so oh, yeah started doing some other stuff and then I'm like okay did that or I'm still doing that but now I'm gonna go back in this and so you can't just repeat the same thing every year because yeah. it becomes very stagnant and stale so you're always having to kind of like challenge what you're capable of mm -hmm. I mean I like a bunch of other snakes too just besides ball for bite sure bites. And, you know, so I'll, I'll admit something, you know, we've been up to your place a few times and I really like dwarf caimans and I really got my passion for them, seeing them at your place, to be honest. I'll say, like, Kevin's animals, how he hand tames, like, a lot of his stuff, unbelievable. He's, like, the guy to do it. So, you know, he has monitors and caimans and big snakes, all different sorts of things. They're just awesome to work with. So if you guys get a chance, go check them out up in where he's at in uh, New Hampshire and you know visit look at his stuff buy his animals it's great it's great to see you out man I really appreciate it we're gonna check out some of your animals appreciate so it. Thank thanks you. man you guys that's this is the, the snake equates to financial freedom Nolian's python it's, it's important it's holy it. crap what kind of perks you get? Uh, talk what kind of about a beauty this know. is like yeah. <laughs> almost <laughs> everybody's <laughs> dream oh, snake yeah, yeah. Like who's just, ever just seen it just put them in a tank they're super rare very hard to breed, That's what I'm doing there. Uh, so but they're just striking. I don't know if the camera can the pick camera up. The camera is not picking up the how great this is. On this, but See my man, man. what a beauty. Oh my goodness. The first time ever being able to hold one. Wow. Gotta thank Kevin for giving people the opportunity. For sure, man. And I'm gonna definitely hold this, but uh, not on camera. Get up on the head. <laughs> Look at that head. Iconic head. That's ridiculous. Dude, wow. this is why you come to Tinley. <laughs> awesome.
All right, guys, we're gonna do four questions again. All right, so what's your name? Uh, my name is Emily. <laughs> All right, and where are you from? Uh, I'm with Snake Discovery. I'm from Wisconsin, but I do a YouTube channel called Snake Discovery. Snake Discovery, we'll link it below, so make sure you go on there, follow her, and watch her videos. They are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right, and what are you passionate about? Um, I'm a colubrid gal myself. Uh, my husband really likes pythons, but I specifically like North American colubrids. North so, American colubrids. Yeah, so I breed garter snakes, uh, fox snakes, bull snakes, hognose snakes, things like that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We like the, the colubrids as well, but like we're doing uh, old world rat snakes. Nice. Oh, I just got Vietnamese blue beauties. Oh, that's yeah, so cool. Yeah, so I, yeah, I can see why you like them so much. Yeah, yeah, no, they're really awesome. Yeah, they are. That's cool. All right. All right, so fourth question. Would you ever consider doing a video just on me and Ryan? But sure, if you like, have enough no, reptiles to play No, 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 just us. Like, not even a reptile. Oh, well, you seem like funny guys, so why not? Hey, you heard it here first. All right. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Sure, thanks for having me on your channel. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're doing four questions. All right, so what's your name? Megan. Megan, and where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio, okay. And what are you passionate about? Alligators, they're my favorite. And just, that's it? Right? Well, I mean, pigs and olive pythons, <laughs> you name it, I own it. Horses, goats, chickens. Gotcha, snakes, gotcha. Chameleons, I have it all. All right, all right. All right, and so, fourth question. What's your best tips on keeping a good beard? Probably a brush or like a comb of some sort. It takes way more than that. Are you kidding I, me? I don't do facial hair. So I don't get this hair. pretty every morning just by rolling out of bed. I mean, Is it's there like a wax? I actually I, I condition it and I blow dry it every day. You straighten it. I straight. I do straighten. That is amazing. Yeah, I straighten it with a blow dryer or something. I just straighten. It. Okay. There's your tip of the day. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Megan. I appreciate it. Right. for something froggy, you gotta find something. Four questions! Four questions! Alright guys, so I have a special opportunity. We're here with Adeline. So she's from Adeline Robinson Illustration and Art, or Art and Illustration. I say it backwards. But she's the beautiful young lady that produces our beautiful artwork, a bunch of it anyway. And she has really cool artwork here. And so we're just gonna do a little talk and I wanna ask her, because nobody really talks to the artists a lot of times. So what are you passionate about? What drives you to do this art? Um, just the beautiful animals that I see. There are so many incredible species out there that um, I'll stumble upon on Facebook or photographers that I know will post up photos of them. And um, they're just striking, they're colorful, they're bright and eye-catching. It's kind of like, you know, why everybody's attracted to the hobbies because of the animals and how um, diverse and beautiful they can be. So yeah, that's awesome. kind of the main thing. Yeah, I have some themes. Monitors seem to kind of be my, my thing for the most part. Mm -hmm. But um, I like a little bit of everybody when it comes to different creatures. Yeah. So. so and how long did it take you to uh, to do this? So this one right. took 16 hours. Um, I've actually got a video on my website where I've got that 16 hours recorded and condensed into six minutes. So you can watch the whole speed drawing video um, on my website and just see what the process is, where I draw it, sketch it out, blotch in the colors, go scale by scale. Um, yeah. It does take a minute. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I actually did watch that video. It's, really? it's, it's pretty good, actually. It's fun to watch. So. Do you have any words of wisdom for any you know young artists that are like trying to get into this? Absolutely, just go for it. Just create as much art as you can. Um, one thing that helped me get back into it was Inktober. So I went a couple years without drawing for a while just because I wasn't motivated or too busy, got too tired. You know, you don't have enough time. Inktober really helped me because that had a daily art prompt 
and it kind of gets you excited to, to put your work out there, see other artists. Um, I absolutely believe in meeting other artists, you know, supporting each other in the hobby. Um, we can really help each other out, but just keep drawing and keep working on it as much as you can. And um, before you know it, you'll you'll be able to produce some artwork you're really proud of and and sell it and you know make a profit off of it. So. Yeah. That's the, that's the goal. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Enjoy good friend of ours. We love her artwork. You gotta check them out. Uh, check everything out that she does. Buy some stuff, you know, buy 10 things. Buy all of it, please. That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> all the things, please. But, so, yeah, so we'll link her up in the description below with all the other links that we have, but we'll try to, you know, make it look cool. So, so uh, you know, I wanna start drawing stuff. Would you right. buy it? Oh yeah, absolutely. It is I stick figures support all at artists. its best, really. To oh be sweet, I will put it on my reptile <laughs> art wall at home. That's I right. seriously well, will. I might do that. Actually. Yeah, That's and I will take funny. a photo and I will send it to you guys. So you can post <laughs> it up. So funny. Now I got to draw something. Yeah. All right. Well, you thank got, you, you so got your much. Your first commission. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Please right. be. Let me pay for you to okay. hang this on my wall or on your wall. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I'm ready. All right. We have four questions. Four questions. So, what's your name? Todd Goodman. Todd Goodman. You know what's funny about that? He's a Goodman. Maybe I am a Goodman. that's Ryan Goodman. Maybe we, uh, maybe we went to different schools together. Yeah, maybe. We may have. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, can he sleep on your floor? Like, is now his family. That's my feeling. It like. depends on where I'm around. at. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry. As you're long good. as you're not there, you can sleep. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> sure. Why not? All right. And where are you from? Marion, Illinois. Marion, Illinois with Timberline. Yes. I don't know if you guys ever heard of them. I mean, the biggest insect producers <laughs> in the world also. Bug people. Bug people. All right. And what are you passionate about? Uh, in this context, I'm passionate about reptile nutrition, proper nutrition. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. a big question about. And the fourth question, if uh, Ryan and I became artists, would you bid $10,000 on one of our paintings if it was going to US Arc? I mean, we can scribble some stuff. You paint it with just your elbows? <laughs> just the elbows. Then I would. Happy sure. trees. Happy yeah, trees happy with elbows. Happy trees, elbow. Yes, yeah, I, would, I would bid on that for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, we're doing four questions. All right, so what's your name? My name's Ari Flagel. Ari Flagel. I'm Ryu. 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 Yeah. Just Ryu. Just Ryu. Just Ryu. <laughs> I always pronounce it wrong. All right, and where are you from? I'm from Texas. I'm from Michigan. Wow. And uh, what's your passion? Bullens by them. Bullens by them. Carpet by them. Carpet by So, a little bit, Ari definitely knows a little bit about Bullens by them. I'm just saying. Yeah. Read his book, buy it, find it. If you can find it and buy it. Buy sure. it, find it and buy it. Buy it. Yeah. Buy it twice. Buy it twice, yeah. <laughs> Alright, and the fourth question. If if you were going back to Indonesia, would you take us with you? I mean, just to hang out and... Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, but like in your room, it's like we want to stay with you. Oh, in the same room? <laughs> well, that's tough. I mean, What I'll goes trim, on I'll in trim. Indonesia stays in Indonesia. I'll trim the beard if that would help. I mean, I uh, we might want to leave it. <laughs> it's perfect. Nice. We're here with Justin Juliander with Australian Addiction Reptiles, and uh, we're big fans of his, his stuff, uh, his books, and also the animals he produces. They're very beautiful. We got our pygmy pythons from him, and hopefully a couple more things coming down the line. <laughs> um, but uh, also, the stuff you're doing when you're going out in Perth in Australia, I listened to a couple of your interviews. It's really amazing. Like, oh, thanks. It's, it's, it's a great, great listen. Check those out. Um, but um, I don't know, talk to me about something that you're passionate about right now. Yeah, man, I, I don't know, I'm just passionate about reptile, uh, you know, Australian reptiles in general, uh, especially the Antaresia genus, the uh, Morelia, pythons, uh, you know, all that stuff is just amazing. Blue tongues, can't blue get enough great. blue tongues, you guys know about those, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this, uh, I guess one of my latest projects, I guess I'd say, are probably the Wheat Belt Stimson's pythons. We've, you know, got a few here, I don't know. If, mess around but yeah so uh, I, I brought some in you know from Europe and and I've done fairly well with them they they're just beautiful pythons probably the P 
pinnacle of Antaresia, in my opinion. You know, okay. Maybe other than pygmies. Pygmies are pretty close there, but um, I, I really love the Wee Bell Stimpsons. So awesome. they're, they're a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, had a good year with uh, the uh, Blue Tongues. Blue Tongues are fun. Oh, yeah. I produced a Western Blue Tongues. So, yeah, that was uh, yeah, talk about one of the highlights of my year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow. fun to, fun to, always good to add a new species to the list. Absolutely. You know, um, species, so. How many babies did you get out of that? Just one. Just yeah, one? yeah, yeah. I was, one's I was better on than that. One. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's great. Well, I had a camera set up on the cage, like so I could watch it from my phone when I was at work. And so I was home. I was sitting in the kitchen. And I just thought I got an alert that there was movement in the cage, and so I pull up the the camera and. And I see this little baby, like, and I'm like, oh, oh awesome. so I ran out of there, you know, as fast as I could go. And check, yeah, it's a beautiful great. little thing. She's growing like a weed, just awesome. Yeah, wow. really fun. But then I, so I was watching her because she still looked like she had more babies, and so I'm, um, she starts pushing, and I'm like, got the, you know, video ready, and I'm like, and then she pushes out a slug. So I'm like, and then she had a couple more slugs. So yeah. hopefully next year those will be babies instead of slugs. Absolutely, that'll be awesome, man. So let's talk about your new book. Yeah, yeah. So um, we we uh, have about sold out of the complete carpet bike. I thought it was sold out, right? There, we, we've been telling people that the the last copy was gone, but I just checked Eco's table and they have like another case left. So apparently they're not all sold out. But so I, I had to buy some back from Eco uh, for, for to sell them. But we're actually working on a second edition, and we've uh, we're pretty. Close, and we're waiting on some genetic analysis to, to get you know finalize the book and try to piece together you know what's going on with the carpet python complex. It's got some you know, weird things going on. Some people think they're all just one species, you know, through yeah. the and no subspecies. Other people think there's different. We're, we're finding some different genetic uh, differences throughout the range of you know, you know, say one subspecies might be actually two or three different things. So okay. you know, it's hard to hard to piece together. Taxonomy's not really much my forte, but there's some, that's some really good papers that have been published that have pretty Im impressive taxonomic uh, um, data from, from a wide variety of individuals, and that's okay. really what you need to kind of answer some of these questions. One of the other kind of, I don't know, dorky, cool things that I kind of <laughs> figured out was I, I laid on the taxonomic um, proposed, you know, uh, groupings and laid them on to a map of the water drainage systems in Australia and they almost overlapped exactly. So, you know, these they're, they're highly associated with rivers and trees that line the, those rivers even if they're dry a lot of the year. Um, but that's like carpet python habitat, so yeah. it makes sense that they would Absolutely. diverge according to, you know, maybe a river drainage system. So, it's kind of fun, yeah. yeah I, it's awesome. I geek out on weird <laughs> stuff. But, yeah. We do too, yeah. trust yeah. me. So that'll, that'll hopefully be all, we'll, you know, we're working through the data, working through all the publications, but hopefully we'll have something cool, you know, with the second edition. I'm and sure we're adding cool. pages, I mean, <laughs> we're, we got, we got, License to use up to 500 pages, so you know it'll be wow. substantially longer with the second edition as compared with the first edition. So That's awesome. we're excited, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's nice of Bob to give us more pages. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Guess uh, yeah. Cool. So cool. Um, I definitely want to talk to you about pygmy pythons. All right. It's something that we love, and I know you love. Oh yeah. So. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Just talk so, to me about it. I don't know. I you know who, who isn't interested in like the smallest python in the world? That's kind of a cool title. You know, I was just talking to some guy who's saying his tick breeder friend is, is is working with pygmies now, so you can say I produce the largest python, I produce yeah, the smallest cool. python. Yeah, but uh, they're they're just absolutely cool snakes. Really, you know, nice red coloration. Um, they they're easy to keep and breed for the most part. Absolutely. Uh, getting the you know babies feeding can be a challenge and that's why the price is still high. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're a lot of work uh, to get going but you know we we have some tricks and you know things that we can use to get them to eat. And, you know, they, yeah <laughs> so I, I, I've had a few I, you know and I'm not sure if this will work with pygmies but with the, with the western Stimpsons um, I actually learned this from a Kluber breeder um, he would boil the frozen thawed pinkies for like two minutes and then pull them out and, and then I, I tried that. I, have like, I had like 15 just non-feeders that wouldn't eat pink mice and I had to assist feed them for several times and so I, I tried a pinky a couple days before and no interest at all and then I, I took one of those frozen thaws and boiled it for five minutes and then put it in the cage. 
13 out of the 15 or 14 out of the 15 ate that boiled pinky right off the bat. Like, no hesitation. It was crazy. That's so, interesting. Yeah, so there's, there's, it, it doesn't, like, it didn't really work with the children's pythons or the, you know, so I don't know if it would work with a pygmy, but it's worth trying because it, it worked worth like trying. gangbusters with the, the Stimson. So, awesome. I don't know. Thanks yeah, for that tip. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank the Colubrid breeders, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think of who told me that. I can't, I'm a terrible memory, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> so. All right, well, that's awesome, man. Well, thanks for taking yeah, the time. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks. Justin Julander, Australian Addiction Reptiles. We're going to put the links down below. Tune in. So we're doing four questions. All right, what's your name? My name's Chris. Chris. Grocer. Where are you from? L.A. L.A.? A little, a little hop and skip. Yeah, a little bit. What are you passionate about? Tortoises. Tortoises. What about tortoises? What, any, all of them? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. How are you going to pick one? <laughs> That's true. She's uh, been in this hobby for quite some time, right? So um, she's like 40 years old, 30 years old. So you've been here since you're 15. <laughs> sure. <laughs> was that the funny question? No, that was not. All right. And the fourth question. If Brian Potter was your son, would you beat him or just kill him? Regularly? I I. <laughs> Vlog him until he was almost dead and then let him come back and then do it again. <laughs> Just run that truck over him a couple times. Well, That's no, vlog him, not run him over. That might, I can't control that. Beat the hell out of him. That's a good idea. All right, you heard it here first. Brian Potter, look out. All right, we're coming at you with four questions. All right, so what's your name? Yeah, my name is PJ uh, from Handmade Herbs. And where are you from? Handmade Herbs? Right. From, yep. I'm from the uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan area, specifically Galesburg. Kalamazoo, Michigan area. Kalamazoo's way cooler than what was the other place. It doesn't matter. It's, Kalamazoo's cool. So, <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. Uh, all right. And so, what are you passionate about? Uh, my thing is old world rat snakes. Those cool climate species, lots of bright colors. All right. And is that what you got here? Something? Yes. So, it's a little, a uh, little bit of a longer answer, but man. Whoop, whoop. All right. Mm. Yep, so this is a uh, Mullendorfi rat snake, 100 flower rat snake. 100 flower rats, and I don't think we saw any of them here this no. year. Um, we did see some at Matthew Moe's place when we visited there, yeah. but... He's got a great collection. These are beautiful. Awesome. The heads on these are awesome, so it's something cool to uh, be passionate about. I love the heads. Yeah, that's where he goes hiding. They go up your shirt, it's great. What is it? It's a uh, Mullendorf rat snake. They also call it a 100 flower rat snake. Yeah, the 100 flower rats. They're cool. All right, and the fourth question, um, how fast can you run? Like, if I was to take this and run, do you think you can catch me? I mean, I'm pretty quick for a chubby guy, but... I <laughs> think... You look like you work out a little bit, but I'm gonna try. I'm not much of a runner, but I think I could probably be a little faster than you, so I'm all right. Man. This is awesome. So it's really beautiful. Thank you, man, for showing us. Yeah, no problem. All right, we got four questions. So, what's your name? Rick Allen. I'm from Army or Army <laughs> Vet with Balls. Army Vet with Balls. That's the where you're from, right? Uh, yep. We're, I'm in McAllister, Oklahoma. McAllister, Oklahoma. Okay. And what are you passionate about? Uh, ball pythons. Ball pythons. Breeding ball right. pythons. All right. And the fourth thing. Um, I'm in pretty good shape. Do you think that I could join the army right now and make it? I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, look, It'd I could be close. <laughs> uh, good thing there's an age limit. I think on I know, that. I think, yeah, 35. I think is. Oh, 35. Out. I'm not even yeah, way past. Me so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we thank you so much for yep, serving. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time. It was great. Nice to meet you and all that. Thanks. All right, guys. So we're gonna do four questions. So, what's your name? Brock Wagner. Brock Wagner. You guys probably have heard that name. Where are you from? Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska, and your business name? Brock Wagner Reptiles. Brock Wagner Reptiles, easy to remember. Very easy. All right, and what are you passionate about? I love ball pythons, obviously. And honestly, uh, I love the clown gene, I love the sunset gene. Banana is still one of my favorites. And I can't wait to start integrating my clown project and taking it to newer levels. Oh, yeah, yeah like I need to do that. I know yeah. I need to do that. So there you go. That's great. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. And the fourth random question. All right. Have you ever done anything with Dave Levinson that you totally regret? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he definitely gets a, That's so funny. 
Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, man, so much for doing it. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, right. guys. So we have four questions. Ready? So, what's your name? Ryan McVeigh. Ryan McVeigh, and where are you from? I am the brand manager for Zilla. So I run Zilla, it's awesome. Yeah, Super yeah. cool company. And uh, Zilla's located out of southern Wisconsin, outside of Milwaukee, and I live not too far from there. All right, and Zilla is one of the uh, you know big people here. They sponsor the NRVC. Oh, yeah. And they're really great, good people. All right? <laughs> I try. Yeah. So what are you passionate about? Oh, man. When it comes to reptiles, Australian uh, and uh, Indonesian pythons, but when it comes to just the hobby in general, man, education. I love it. I love getting kids excited. That's what's fun. That's what, that's what drives you, you know? Like snakes are great, all that keeping is fun, but like getting a little kid excited about snakes, then nothing beats it. That's the best part about this old building, old hobby. All right. And you're with uh, Madison Area Herb Society. Yep. So you gotta check them out as well, yeah, and that's where you do a lot of your education. From, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, and if there's not one near you, you just start a herb society and go do it. That's what I did. Yeah, okay. Um, so, the random question, and I'm just making it up on the spot, of course. Um, if you could do the last night over again, would you do it? So, last night, <laughs> he uh, proposed to his girlfriend, who's now fiance, mm -hmm. and um, there's a lot of uh, people on both sides of the fence saying, do it or don't do it, so. <laughs> Nah, would I would 100% do, do it again. Would you wish you paid less for the auction item? <laughs> <laughs> I would have I would have thrown a rock at Dan and made him shut up. That's what I would have done. Yep. I, this close, when he was like $10,001, almost didn't say anything. I'm like, I'll make you buy it. Whatever. You, you can buy my proposal. Ten grand. Way to go, Dan. That was awesome. So you guys have to check that out, and yeah. we'll post that video too. So Absolutely. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure, guys. Thanks. All right, guys, so we're with Phil from US Arc, and uh, he's gonna tell us a little bit about US Arc and you know, what we're working with and uh, why we wanna donate and support them. So Phil, why do we wanna donate and support right, you guys? that's the intro. All right, so US Arc, if you're not aware, is the US, United States Association of Reptile Keepers. You can check us out at www.usarc.org. We are a 501c6 nonprofit. And essentially, we protect your freedoms to keep reptiles and amphibians as pets is the short answer. Absolutely. So make sure you guys become members on there, like we are. And if you want to know a little bit about what we've been up to recently, we just had a big win in West Virginia. We stopped some animals from being added to their Dangerous Wild Animals Act. Yep. This year has probably been as busy as any two previous years combined. We've actually stopped about two dozen local ordinances, um, five or six at least state issues. Uh, we're working on some federal stuff that we haven't really been talking about yet, and we got our fingers in a whole lot of pies this year. That's awesome. So when you say that you know you've stopped some regulations that happen, what does that exactly mean for the for the people that don't understand that type of lingo? Yeah, if it hasn't hit you personally, you may not know what that means. But some places have tried to pass like basically blanket bans on all exotics. I mean, we've stopped ordinances this year that would have banned pretty much anything except for dogs and cats. It would have made yeah. it illegal for you to keep those animals. Um, yeah. Other times, it's like a pet limit where you can only have four or five animals total. And we had to get that next. Um, but unless it comes to your city, you may not. Not even be aware that things like this are happening but they're happening across the country and that's what us arcs fights to stop yeah and imagine like one day waking up and then somebody's like hey we know that you have a bunch of animals and you're not allowed to keep any of them anymore like what do you do like that's it's ridiculous and it's detrimental to the hobby but also to the conservation of the animals themselves there's a lot of us that keep some rare stuff that maybe in the wild it's not doing so well but in collections that we can conserve these animals and keep them around on the planet and these guys really help us out in the united states to keep these animals alive and with us um, and be able to just share the joy of it as well but also just for the animals for us those are our shirts thank <laughs> and uh <laughs> and so these guys just really make it possible on a legal end um, for us to do what we do yeah, that's an awesome point, and the important thing to remember is that the legislators and people writing these laws just aren't educated on the animals. That's where it's our role to go in and just educate them. If they, if you can get them to listen to you, um, go and have a meeting with them or talk at a hearing and tell them, and especially talk about how passionate you are with these animals. That's the easiest way to stop it. But you got to step up and, and make that happen. So. Yeah, and there's, and if you don't know, go into your, uh, go on Google is really a good place. And look to see what the local laws are for your area as well as your state. Like we're in New Jersey, you need a permit to own a ball python. 
to keep a ball python, but you don't for like an anaconda, which is weird. Like it's really strange. Like I don't know why, but there's a whole bunch of things that you can't do in Jersey, yeah. and we had to learn those things before we kept anything. And New Jersey is a crazy state, and those are laws that date way back before U.S. Arc was even around. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, you, New Jersey's got some pretty tough uh, legislation <laughs> you got to deal with. We almost want to just move laws. over the yeah. over the border of Pennsylvania, <laughs> which is so much better, you know. We can't keep any dwarf caimans. You guys know I like dwarf caimans. So. It's unbelievable. But, so thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Go on US Art, become a member, donate some money, come out to something where there's auctions, buy some shirts, do anything you can to help support these guys. So thank you thanks, so much. Man. I yep, appreciate thanks for your time. It. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys. So this is one of the big, definitely things you got to do when you come out to Tinley Park. This is Bubba, and he's been coming out here since the show started. And uh, we're at, with cold-blooded creatures. They have a rescue and, um, right? Like a. Well, he was a rescue. He was a rescue. 15 animal. years ago from Chicago. Oh. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So he's live. He's super, super tame. He's awesome to pet and play with. He's here all day, every day that uh, Timley's going on. And you can come out, take pictures with him, donate to the rescue. And he's just a good, good boy. Nice Look at him. Sweetie. Yeah, he works so with special great. needs kids. Works with special needs kids. You guys hear that? He so that's a awesome. Therapy gator. A therapy gator. gator. I'm serious. That's awesome. People yeah. laugh, but he's great. What See? special needs kids? And people, kids. people always say that you know reptiles aren't always cuddly, but I mean, uh, look at this thing. It's great. He's good. So, yeah, so definitely check him out when you guys come out here. And thank you guys. Four questions, guys. All right. So, what's your name? Eric Demeyer. Eric. All right, and where are you from? Wausau, Wisconsin. Wausau, Wisconsin, and your business? Royal Constrictor Designs and PrestaGecko.com. Yep, Royal Constrictor Designs, so gotta go check out his stuff. It's really good. Uh, he has amazing animals. He's kind of an OG in this business, so. All right, and what are you passionate about? Um, well, just producing the prettiest ball pythons I can. Um, yeah, I do a lot of stuff with clowns, a lot of stuff with pies, a lot of stuff with banana. Just trying to figure out what color morphs to, or what genes to add into them to make the best looking ones possible. You know, when it all comes down to it, we want these things to look awesome and be gorgeous. So it's just a matter of experimenting with a lot of different genes, adding and subtracting different genes, figuring out which ones are going to make the best overall look in a ball pipe. Oh yeah, no, that's great, and that's a great you know philosophy. Doing it kind of what you like to do, yeah, not just like what sells, you know. Right. Well, I mean, I'm doing it partly for to sell stuff, obviously, but but mostly it's to see. I want to see what this looks like. Like when yeah. I hatch something out, I, I can marvel in how awesome it is. But very shortly after that, I start thinking, hmm, I wonder how I can make that even better. And that's the challenge. Like that's what keeps me doing this. If I just made the same things over and over again, I would be bored. Yeah. I I want to make a better version every generation so it's just a matter of figuring out what gene do i need to get in that to tweak it to make make it really pop and that's the challenge that's what keeps me really excited about breeding oh yeah no that's great this is actually my this this uh, season coming up will be my 20th year breeding ball python 20 years probably 27th year breeding reptiles in general i started when i was in college can't believe it's been that many years already yeah. but uh, but yeah, I mean, 20 years breeding ball pythons. That's great. It's really changed a lot, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm sure. And there's amazing stuff out there. And you have amazing stuff. So, in the fourth question, um, if you could sneak in and steal one snake from Justin Cabelka, what would it be? Oh, um, <laughs> what was that? The lavender, was it lav lavender, leopard, enchi, blackhead that he's got? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> one of Ryan's top snakes that he has. That, I mean, that thing. Well, it just, you know, it's so much brighter than anything. His stuff on his table is all awesome. Yeah. But it's like the single thing that your eyes, you, you can't take your eyes yeah, off. You can't, you can't so miss it. That would probably be one of them. I mean, <laughs> otherwise, maybe his, uh, you know, any anything with like a Pompeii type of thing. He's got like yeah, yeah. variations now, but yeah, I mean, all, right. all kinds of things. So, Justin, if you see uh, Garrick just sneaking around, you know, keep your eyes up. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's too. I guess. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, Gary. I no appreciate problem. it. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys, so much for being a part of this and for watching. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the four question bit that we did. I know it probably got a little bit long. We did a lot. Uh, maybe we'll. We did a lot. Yeah, we did do a lot of them. Um, hopefully we caught as many people as we could. Uh, I know that we filmed all day Saturday and Sunday. And if we didn't catch you, make sure you find us on uh, Saturday, Sunday, and March. 
It's the 14th and 15th, I believe. Yeah, man. So if you see us, come take a picture with us. Well, I mean, not that we're that cool. You can use our camera so we can get a picture of you because you're more important than us, trust me. But uh, yeah, and we'll film and do some fun things. Um, yeah, so please hit that notification bell, which I think is over there. And then like this video. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. And it'll help us to, you know, kind of direct where we want to put our videos and things like that. So, share it with your friends. Share with your friends. You know, a lot of people really liked it when they're like, man, I was watching this video and Ryan was slapping you. Like, really? I wasn't thinking about it like right now. I was just thinking more like, that's what people liked. <laughs> I know. It's like barely hitting me. Look, I don't even like to touch people. So like he's really asked me to do this. I'm not like a guy. It's not true. Like lots of people know you're mean. Touching people. You're mean and vicious and angry. I just I just like you to get out your anger and frustration on me instead of on like people, other people. Hey, Michigan Society of Herpetologists. <laughs> All right.